Sure. I'm Kevin Jones. I'm the founder and convener of Social Capital Markets, the SOCAP conference. It's the market at the intersection of money and meaning. And we bring together these impact investors who want to put some meaning with their money and invest in businesses that do good in the world and the social enterprises that are doing that good in the world and building a big community. This is our biggest conference. Our people are here from government, people are here from big foundations, people are here from these new social venture impact funds, uh, consultants, academics. So I think we have a much broader convening from you know, 60 countries, uh, 1,600 people, so our largest conference ever. I think this is, this is a community that wants to meet together. They come, they learn, they talk to each other. You know, so much business is done in the hallways, people learn from each other. Yeah, we started SOCAP in 2008, and it was just an idea that there were a lot of convenings around that were just trying to get the right people in the room, and we thought that was the wrong idea. We wanted to include the valuable strangers, the people you wouldn't run into ordinarily, and create a viable, vital market of, you know, the, from the barbarian to the Byzantine, you bring them all together and you create something that's really thriving and, and alive. And so we had 600 people that first year. And then we grew to 900, 1100, 1400, and now uh, in 2012 we're at uh, 1600 people from nearly 70 countries. So it's, it's a community that's growing. I think we've become kind of a place that just people want to come and renew acquaintances, but meet the new people and see what's happening. Sure. You know, in the, when we first started, impact investing actually hadn't even been coined as a, as a phrase, but there was this new idea that seemed to be happening and yet people had a hard time understanding it. And it was that you wouldn't just invest for your own financial return, you would invest for social good positively along with you're investing with the rigor of an investor. So there had been kind of the two-pocket thinking where you give to do good and you invest for a financial return and then you give some of that excess into philanthropy. This was bringing that thing together where the desire of philanthropy to do good in the world with the rigor of investing so you know where the money goes and you get it back and you don't have to keep pouring the money into you know, giving and giving and it's 100% gone, but you get the money back to do good with again. I think the future of impact investing is that this will become the way people think about their money. You, you, you can't just think about yourself and your money in the world anymore. The world doesn't let you do that. We have all these externalities, all the environmental consequences, the social consequences. We can't just think about ourselves. We have to think about our own impact in the world. And so this is risk re and return investing, traditional investing. You think about risk, you think about return. Am I going to get my money back? What's the risk? But it's also the, the third dimension. It's adding this other dimension of who you are and putting meaning with your money to say what does my money do in the world and you won't put all your money there you put some of your money in things that are just purely get the money back but this is a new way of investing that I think people are, are learning and want to be part of because that's who we are in the world so it's really more holistic it's more of who we are with more of what our money is and more of what we want to do in the world. Yeah, we've had a great crew. We've had folks from the White House, folks from the State Department, folks from the UN, and then we've had you know the president of the Gates Foundation, the president of the Rockefeller Foundation, of the Midiar Network that's put half a billion dollars into the stuff. So I think the we've been validated by the big dogs in a way that we haven't been before. I think they see SOCAP as a, a way to reach the people who want to move their money toward good. We, just, we really are becoming this market at the intersection of money and meaning that we that we wanted to be when we started. So the hub is is the sister of SOCAP, and it's where change goes to work every day. If, if uh, SOCAP is you know where the change makers come from around the world for three days a year. The hub is where change goes to work every day. And so there are these co-working spaces that we have in San Francisco and Berkeley, now Oakland, but there's 30 of them around the world in Sao Paulo. One just opened up in Bogota and London, in Zurich, in, uh, in South Africa, in Mumbai. And we're, so we're part of that network. And so there's this global network of people making change. And it's a cheaper place to work than an office and you're sharing space, but you're also sharing ideas. And there's a great network forming of those. And they're just... One is opened last week in Los Angeles. One opens week after next in Seattle. They're opening in Boulder. They're opening in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And there should be about a dozen in the U.S. Uh, that we're involved in and helping to invest in uh, within the next six to eight months. 
Well, the hub started about half a dozen years ago, and then we started ours about three years ago. And it, it, there are just all these people wanting to make change, and they're often working really hard on some of the toughest problems of the world, and they're working by themselves in, in their houses, in cafes. And they discovered that they can get further faster by working together, sharing ideas, and somebody working on some other part of the same problem, you know, uh, customer adoption, outreach, marketing, uh, web branding, social uh, search engine optimization, uh, all those kinds of things. And they, they discover that they can get there faster if they're working near each other and around each other, and they get encouraged, you know. They're all trying to do things that are really, really hard, uh, that are going upstream against some of the toughest problems in the world. And so by working around each other and together, they, they gain encouragement. They realize they're not alone. And so they gain energy and they get further, faster, uh, and smarter. You know, the people who do this difficult work are often motivated by something in their own lives. I was talking to a guy yesterday in Texas. He runs a thing called AuntBertha.com. And his mother had encephalitis when uh, he was 17. She went off to the hospital, something was odd, and came back and didn't know him, didn't know any of their family within two days. And they didn't know what to do with her. Her father worked for nine years to try to keep her there at home. And he realized there was much more help for people like his mother than he knew what to do with. So he's got this great site that then if you put in your zip code in Texas, you can find out if you have this medical problem, there's this help. And so he's continually motivated by that because he lived nine years with not having those answers. So it's, it's often something that connects to their own lives that they see that problem and it keeps them going even when it's hard. But there's, there's, there's some part of the story that this is what they want to do. We often have people who change careers who go into social enterprise. We have career changers. And they've worked for, you know, for Cisco, for Salesforce, for Apple, for whatever. And they just realize that they want something more in their life. And so they realize that the problems of the world and they say, I want to be part of the solution. I want more meaning in my own life. And so we have a lot of career changers who are doing this because they want more out of their life, and they, but they have great skills and they want to apply them. An increasing number of business schools are looking at impact investing and social enterprise as what their students want to be about. I mean, they don't just want to go to Goldman Sachs or Merrill Lynch or wherever they would go, Deutsche Bank. They want careers where they can put their financial skills to good use for the good of the world and to get something out of it themselves. So, you know, there are oh, probably a couple hundred uh, business schools now that have a social enterprise focus and that th to make that happen you need the fuel, you need the, uh, the capital to make it happen. And so there are rules and there are best practices, there's emerging body of knowledge around impact investing as a way to put the money to work for these businesses that want to change the world. And so I think as these students get into the, the, the programs I think they'll, 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 they can learn from the, the folks that, who come to SOCAP who are the researchers who are the doers and, and out of which research is happening that I think will inform the business schools. We have a lot of scholarship students and we have a lot of volunteers. We have more practitioners, doers, people who are actually doing the investing, people who are creating the businesses come to SOCAP and we have a pool of more than a hundred volunteers, many of them are you know, business students from around the country. And we have about three or four hundred who apply and we can only use about a hundred and they're eager to learn what's happening here. They're eager to meet these people. They're eager to see the case studies. They're eager to, to learn from the leaders. They're eager to learn from their peers, you know, the, the students who have left school to start these enterprises. Well, this is, uh, yeah, so the question of regulation, I mean, it's, this is, this is a, a, an industry where they're measuring their own impact. And so I think there's self-regulation through the GEARS rating system and other kinds of ratings of impacts. It's regulated just like private equity is rated, like uh, public equity is rated. And I think the, uh, the, the practitioners are well ahead of the, the, the regulators in actually putting the controls in place to make sure the impact that, that you say you're going to put in, the, the good you're going to create, is really there. So I think you know, the, the, the nimble uh, practitioners are the ones who are, who are putting the, the controls in place to make sure that uh, the money goes where it, it said it would go and it, it does the good that they said they would do. Yeah.
Yeah, there are a lot of, uh, you know, fund managers are waking up to this because there's new research that says there's like $190 billion in the U.S. Uh, that's held by wealth managers on behalf of uh, people in the U.S. who want to move this way. So there are new intermediaries like Impact Assets who are showing you 50 validated uh, impact funds and what they do in the world. And so I think there's a lot of people who are helping the wealth managers, who are helping the, uh, the money managers guide their clients into this because there's, there's huge demand. This is a market that's fueled by a moral hunger. That's what's causing this thing to happen. And so uh, the money managers are just responding to the demand of their clients because they want to do more with their money. And so they're looking for places to put it in response to the demand of the investors. Yeah, well, I think, you know, impact investing is moving more mainstream. I think you have more folks like JP Morgan, like Deutsche Bank, like the, you know, the Prudentials of the world who are moving here. And I think it's going to be more mainstream because the world needs all the money at the table to solve the problems of the world. So there's not enough money in philanthropy and that government money is less. And so the market needs to step forward. And so because of that broad reality of the world, then investors are starting to fill that gap. And so it's becoming mainstream because these social enterprises, these businesses that want to do a difference, make a huge difference in the world, are becoming larger and more real and more investable. And so it's becoming mainstream because of the need of the world, of the desire and demand of the investor, and because the enterprises that, that are using the market to make a positive difference in the world are becoming larger and more investable. Yeah, I think impact investing is, I hope it doesn't become an asset class. So you just put, you know, a tiny portion of your money toward good. I hope it becomes a lens where you look at all of your money in a different way. And you say, how do I have an impact with, you know, my fixed income securities, my public equities, my, my private equities. It should be across all portfolios. It should be a way of looking at your money as opposed to just a small portion of uh, your money put toward good. And then the rest of it can be off doing whatever it, it, it should do. I think it, it, what it should do is lead to an accountability by all your investments in, into what your impact is in the world. So the, when you put your money this way, you realize that not all of it, the value flows to you. Some of that value flows into the world. And so in some way, you're investing and you're bringing that money to the house, but you're also building the commons. You're building the place that we all share. And so that's, you know, it, it, it's a thing where you have to realize we're all in this together. Impact investing only works if people realize we're all in this together and we need to share in the good that we do. I got into this realm by um, did well in business and then tried to get into being on a nonprofit board uh, or two and realized I, as a serial entrepreneur, had been successful. I didn't have a lot of patience for the incremental consensus process of nonprofit boards. Then I went off and tried to you know, solve malaria in Swaziland and Mozambique and I realized, oh, I'm still fast moving, self empowered uh, guy from the US who's trying to work on uh, problems of African health. Uh, I, I, you need to be more like a community organizer to do that kind of thing and be, listen more than I was able to listen. And then I realized I could convene people and tell big stories and bring people together and clarify early markets. And so that's what I'd done in uh, my previous career. We'd defined the category of internet business to business marketplaces back in the dot com. And I'd done that in a couple other, uh, you know, information businesses inside early markets. And so that's what SOCAP does and that's what the hub does. So I work well to clarify early markets and make the opportunity clear and make what's happening clear to folks. Say, this is what's happening, this is where it's going, that kind of stuff. That's what I do well. Well, am I, you know, the, yeah, I, I am smart enough to talk to the thought leaders and help bring their ideas out. I, I, I'm probably a, a connector to the mavens, but I can be in conversation with the mavens. That's my goal, I think. And I, I like to be able to point to people who are, who are the thought leaders and who are the doers and to highlight the, the ones who are really making the big change. I think you know, next year we're going to be about more than impact investing. We're going to be about accelerating the good economy. We're going to be about collaborative commerce and sharing. We're going to be about crowdfunding. We're going to look at all the ways that civic engagement is now changing and having an entrepreneurial focus. So I think we're going to be broader and we're going to be looking at all the ways that we all, whoever we are, whether you're a accredited investor, whether you really have money to invest, or you just have the money in your pocket or the money in your bank account, you can be involved in changing the world and being part of this. So I think we want to enable a movement, but also uh, enhance investment toward making a better world and accelerating the good economy. 
Next year at SOCAP, we're going to be accelerating the good economy. We're going to be meeting here in San Francisco in September. And I think we're going to be broader and we're going to be looking at all the ways we can accelerate the good economy from collaborative commerce and sharing to crowdfunding to investing, bringing together hundreds of entrepreneurs who are changing the world with the investors who want to make that happen. I hope you can join us. Excellent. Okay. Very nice. All right. Thanks.